Good morning students, this is M. Prasant Raju, stand before you to give a class on Unit 3, Portion 2 called Band Theory of Solids. Previously, we have discussed of about uh, Band Theory of Solids, the first part of the Unit 3 called Free Electron Theory of Metals. Now we are going to continuation of the Unit 3, namely Part 2 called Band Theory of Solids. In this video lecture, I would like to present the two major portions of the concepts. The first one is known as the most important theorem called Bloch's theorem and the second one is known as effective mass of electron. Before I am going to explain Bloch's theorem, I would like to explain the relationship between crystals and crystal lattice. Let us identify what is crystal and what is crystal lattice. Crystals are metals and alloys are crystalline in nature. We all know that metals and crystals are crystalline in nature. Suppose for example, if the conduction electrons are released they move towards the positive ion core inside part of that uh, positive ion core. So strictly speaking that if you look at these two diagrams, the first diagram explains of about uh, periodic positive ion cores inside of the metallic crystal and uh, the second one represents that it is called one dimensional periodic potential existing in crystal substances. So now I would like to explain that the relationship between metals and alloys. I would like to write like this. The first portion is called metals and alloys are crystalline in nature or crystalline in nature. The second one is when conductional electrons, when conductional electrons are released It moves towards the positive ion core sites. Now we need to find the, the difference between conductors and insulators. So in order to find, identify or in order to determine the difference between conductors and insulators, it is necessary to incorporate the variation of potential existing inside part of the crystal substance. So how to take that uh, necessity of uh, involving the inside part of the metallic crystal, we are going to identify according to the one dimensional Schrodinger wave equation. So therefore, strictly speaking that according to one dimensional Schrodinger equation, we know that the potential difference existing in conductors and the potential difference in uh, conductors and insulators how they were going to vary now we are going to take this here the potential difference is minimum is minimum in positive ion core site and it is maximum in and it is maximum in any between in between any two of the any two of the ions. So block shown that according to one dimensional Schrodinger wave equation which is given by one dimensional Schrodinger wave equation is given by dou square psi by dou x square plus 8 pi square m by h square into e minus v of x into psi is equal to 0. I can call it as equation 1. If you look at this equation, you could remember that it is called uh, the Schrodinger wave equation, but it is one dimensional Schrodinger wave equation. We consider only one axis. Let it be written as dou square psi by dou x square plus 8 pi square m by h square into e minus v of x into psi is equal to 0. In this equation, we are calling that v of x is said to be where v of x is called periodic potential function periodic potential function periodic potential function extending from extending 
v of x2 v of x plus a this a is called a lattice constant that means the periodic function the periodic potential function by means of a lattice constant is a so therefore strictly speaking that the bounding intervals between potential with respect to a function v of x is varying from v of x to v of x plus a now we need to take the solution of equation one as i told you in the beginning that my equation one is exclusive representing that schrodinger time independent wave equation belongs to only one dimensional axis so let us see that the solution of equation one can be written as psi of x is equal to e power i k x into u k of x this is equation two so if you see this equation two you could understood that it is called exclusively the solution of equation one which can be written as psi of x is equal to e power i k x into u k of x where psi of x is called wave function and k is called propagation vector and u k is called periodic potential function extending from u k of x to u k of x to u k of x plus a. so here also we could understood that my u k of x is called periodic potential function varying from u k of x to u k of x plus a as i told you in the beginning that the u k of x with respect to u k of x plus a by means of a lattice constant my a is called exclusively lattice constant so how could we write this because of this particular equation we could find the momentum of a crystal vector i could write it as now the momentum of the momentum of a potential periodic function can be written as can be written as p is equal to hk by 2 pi i can call it as equation 3 now where p is called momentum of a vector and h is called planck's constant and k is called propagation vector i'm going to write it here the first one is known as where p is equal to momentum h is equal to planck's constant and k is equal to propagation vector the propagation vector we can also explain that it is called a state of motion of an electron that means the electron is going to be existing in which type of state that it tells us so therefore if i could substitute k is equal to 2 pi by lambda as it is called a propagation vector if k is equal to 2 by lambda substitute k value in equation 3 we get momentum p is equal to h by 2 pi into 2 pi by lambda after simplifying this as 2 pi 2 pi cancel here we will get p is equal to h by lambda followed by lambda is equal to h by p that is equal to h by we can also write it as mv since t is equal to mv called the momentum of an electron so strictly speaking that lambda is equal to h by p i could write p as again mv what is mv here momentum of an electron so if an electron is moving with a mass m with an elastic v i could write the momentum of an electron as p is equal to mv therefore lambda is equal to h by p that is equal to h by mv since p is equal to mv this particular lambda i am going to call it as de broglie's wavelength where lambda is equal to de broglie's wavelength this can be written as lambda is equal to h by p now we need to find for three dimensional axis how the equation will be becomes here 
In the previous equation, I told you that if you see equation 1, that is called the one dimensional Schrodinger time independent wave equation, it has referred by our Bloch's theorem. So, strictly speaking, here Bloch has shown that the periodic function of a crystal with respect to one dimensional axis according to the equation 1. What is that equation 1 we told here? Dou square x dou square psi by dou x square plus 8 pi square m by h square into e minus v of x into psi is equal to 0. So, in the total equation of 1, my v of x is called periodic potential function always varying from v of x to v of x plus a. So, what is a again here? My a is called that is constant. That means the periodic function of a potential in crystal, inside part of the crystal by means of a lattice constant and let it be denoted by E. So, therefore, for three dimensional, for three dimensional, the solution of, the solution of equation 1 can be expressed as, I can write like this, psi of R is equal to e power i k r into u k of r. I can call it as equation 4. So, strictly speaking here, according to this equation 4, we could understood that my psi of r is equal to e power i k r into u k of r. In the previous equation 2, if you see, that is solution for equation 1 in only one dimension. So, strictly speaking here in this particular context, I would like to differentiate the difference between equation 2 and equation 4. Equation 2 is telling that psi of x is equal to e power i k x into u k of x. But here, if you see for 3 dimensional, I can get psi of r is equal to e power i k r into u k of r. That means, this is the exclusive solution for the 3 dimensional axis. We could explain the Schrodinger's time independent wave equation for a periodic function existing in inside part of the crystal. I can represent that psi of r is equal to e power i k r into u k of r. If you look at this equation 4, my psi of r is called wave function with respect to 3 dimensional. And my k is called propagation vector. We can also call it as state of motion of an electron. What is state of motion of an electron? The electron is going to existing in which type of state it tells us. So, usually in mathematical representation, we can write this propagation vector as k is equal to 2 pi by lambda according to the equation. So, similarly u k of r, I, I gave you one physical significance behind on this u k of r. What is u k is no, u k is called periodic potential function with respect to a propagation vector. u k of x, which is along to one dimensional axis. If you take u k of r, it belongs to three dimensional axis. So, therefore, if you look at equation 4 and 2, I can say that if you see equation 2 here, so the difference between equation 4 and equation 2, we could understood that equation 2 represents the solution of equation 1 and equation 4 is the solution of equation 1. But in the fourth equation, we could explain that it is called three dimensional axis. So in three dimensional axis, one thing we have to identify, what is that you know, my R is representing that the combination of three dimensional axis. The squares of the distance with respect to x, y, z axis, I can write it as r square is equal to x square plus y square plus z square. So, in that way, we can write the solution of equation 1 in 3 dimensional, I can represent it, it is psi of r is equal to e power i k r into u k of r, I can call it as equation 4. This is what is known as Bloch's theorem. So, Bloch's theorem mainly explains of about two major items. What are those two major items? Let me repeat once again. First one is known as, the first one is periodic, positive periodic ion cores existing in the inside part of the metallic crystal and the second one is known as one dimensional periodic potential existing in metallic crystal. So, Bloch majorly stressed and explained on the two major things. First one is called positive periodic ion core sites existing in the inside part of the crystal and the second one is known as one dimensional periodic potential function existing in crystal. This is what is known as the most important uh, concept which is called Bloch's theorem. After finishing this Bloch's theorem, we are going to enter into the effective mass of electron. <laughs>